away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. You know the drill, www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. They will deliver right to your front door pretty much anywhere inside the 275 loop or get down to Dayton, Kentucky. Come to pump it up. We're working on a new word. I've been texting with Shane. We're, we're coming up with something new for this season. But tell him to pump Fine. it up for now. Save yourself 15% off of your order Wednesday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. All right, Aaron. Look, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're a regular BBP watcher on Monday nights, that was as good a BBP as we have done in a long time. It was fun and interesting and entertaining. So go watch that. Uh, we are continuing to increase the role of Keegan Nickerson, who has, uh, he's been a revelation here of sorts. And it's good to uh, see people grow in their role and kind of own the space that we've created. A breath of fresh air, if you will. Yeah, yeah. New people are good for the business. I'd also watch this show on Thursday night. I'm just saying. Um, let's get to it. Sure. Uh, I was at practice today. It was, it was crappy. a wet one. Crappy for most of the day. I, I think it stopped raining for maybe the last like 20 minutes of practice. Um, it was. <laughs> how do I say this with the with the ability to be respectful? It was as bad a day on offense as maybe you'll ever see uh, at camp. So that's where I wanted to dive into the questions. I'm looking at Keegan's report here, and we don't see a ton about the defense. So what I will ask you, what did you see today out of the defense as a whole that maybe was a little different from the scrimmage? I think it was really hard to get a feel for the defense today because the offense was just so disjointed. They couldn't complete a pass. Like the, the, the ball... I, they were playing in essentially – it wasn't a driving rain, but it was a constant rain. There was no ability to, like, you know, dry the balls off, get get the, the gloves dry for the receivers. Balls were, were going through the receivers' hands. I didn't think there was a ton of bad passes. Like, remember I on Friday we talked a lot well, about – I did notice one thing on Saturday even. Um, Chris Scott was so – distraught about having balls going through his hands that he just threw his gloves off. He was done with his gloves. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was something that, is that something that continued today with Chris Scott as he was somebody I, I who didn't made attention to his gloves. Fair enough. He made a bunch of great plays today. So I, I didn't I didn't I was just curious if he did it know. with the with the I, I don't I don't know. He it was just something that's on. It was just something that stood out to me that he threw his gloves off that I didn't know if that was something that carried over to today or if that well, was... Well, when you have something like that that you want... I'm sorry. I, I, you should I just, text me and say, does Chris Scott have his gloves on today? Just, and just, then I'll look just, for it. Just <laughs> kind of popped just kind of popped into my head. So maybe maybe check for it tomorrow. I don't know. I'll or ask him. You. Or Aaron ask him. No, did you have gloves on yesterday? Yeah, um, ask him. Especially if he's yeah. somebody who wants shout outs. <laughs> I noticed that he threw his gloves off and, and I didn't yeah, know if that carried over to today. That was um, Friday. Like there was a lot of miscommunication. It felt like the like things were off mainly because the defense was hot on Friday. Like they got after the offense. Hair on fire. Line. Yeah. Hair on fire. So Emory Jones is dealing with Dante Corleone and Juwan Briggs at his feet. And he's inconsistent throwing the ball. I didn't think that was a problem on Saturday um, in terms of him. Like, Emory Jones didn't throw an interception on Saturday. He never put the ball in a bad spot where I thought, like, oh, you're going to kill yourself if you keep doing that. Um, today, they just couldn't connect. Like, if the pass was there, the ball was dropped. If the route was there, the ball was a little up or away or in a hard spot. And that's so, what happens when you practice for an hour and a half in a, a consistent rainstorm. 
so just to make sure that we're on the same page here, it's not necessarily an indictment on Emory Jones. It's not necessarily an indictment on the receivers. It was just a combination of both, really. Yeah. I mean, th- there was just a disconnect because you're playing in elements like that. Now, there's there's a, a conversation to be had there because Keegan said to me in the morning, he said, well, this is kind of a day lost in practice. I disagree. I I disagreed as well. We like we had this conversation as practice was starting. This is a day lost because they're going to have to do this entire practice in the rain. And my argument was, guess what? Sometimes you show up on Saturday and it's going to rain all day. Correct. And you have to learn how to adapt and adjust. Today was kind of the perfect storm. <laughs> no pun intended. There, there weren't, there was no thunder. There was no lightning. It was just a steady, kind of calm rain. More than a drizzle, less than right. a downpour. Not a downpour. Right. Like last week when we had that day that got delayed twice. There but was a, game that, a, game that they, a game that they would play in as opposed there to. There was no reason. If, there, if that was a game, there would be zero reason to cancel or postpone the game. There was no, like, if you looked at the radar, there was no yellow, there was no red, there was no reason for, like, to to halt play. Sure. Sometimes you just have to play in bad weather. So I do think it is a good thing to have a day where you have to, like, work through that. Now, the offense was bad. It was not good. Um, it, it like whatever it was was just disjointed, um, pretty much throughout. Now, what you do hope for in those situations is that your run game looks pretty good, uh, and it did. The, there were plays. Miles Montgomery, Aaron, he went left, made a jump cut to the right, and hit the hole back on the other side for a touchdown that was there like, was there a hold no i didn't see a hold on that one weird anyhow um it was it was one of those things in this outside zone system where so the play is designed left he takes the ball left he took a jump cut that I, I said this to, I don't remember who, but he took a jump cut from the left guard almost to the right tackle where like, you know what I mean? Like he saw like the, a, like a the three defense. Yard, yeah. A three yard jump. Yeah. Like where he saw the defense flowing so drastically left. Just plant and jump. Yeah. He planted, jumped back to the right and took it straight up field for a touchdown. That was like, that's, Outside zone. So That's, I want to I want to double down on this take though. Is that he is this team's drone forward, where he's the only one that I think is capable of making that move to turn it up and take that extra yeah. gear. I Miles will probably be mad if he heard me say this. He's not Jerome Ford fast in the open field, and that's fair. But he's also really fast in the open field. But he's the only one who has it. Fast in the open field was elite. He's the only one who has that extra gear, though, right? Like, I don't. Uh, I, I don't. I do I don't, think there's one guy that might. Manny okay. Kobe, who well, still I, looks I like wanna, a slot receiver. <laughs> I, I was I was just trying to compare Ethan Wright. No, Corey I know Kiner, of, of the, Ryan the roster. Right, yeah. right, right. He's the, the one that guy are, that can do that. Even even Steph Bird doesn't have that extra gear. Like I mean, not not that he's Bird the power. Yeah, like, Bird Bird's closer to to Kiner. Yeah, in that regard, um, and and Man, Ryan is, he has a little young Miles Montgomery to him. Well, Ryan Ryan is is this team's Frank Gore, where he's going to get you <laughs> three three to four yards at a time. It's so fascinating with Ryan Montgomery because he just he won't. Like he's he's a grinder. Get, he's a grinder. Yeah. He's going to get you three to four. I'm going to chase you. He's the tortoise and the hare. Like Ryan Montgomery, as weird as it sounds with his abilities, 
is just going to grind down everybody he's, in that running back room until he's the starter. He's Frank Gore. He, he's yeah. going to get you three to four yards at a time, never yeah. going to be negative, and he's just going to keep hitting you for three to four yards at a time, period, yeah. the end. We saw yeah. that in the scrimmage. Um, defensively, though, who may play today as the offensive offense was, from what I'm hearing, anemic? Um, I still continue to be super impressed by DJ Taylor. Like I was impressed. I was really impressed by him in, in the spring. He's becoming even more and more comfortable as the summer is going along. He had a couple big plays today. He also, uh, he was, he was on, uh, the, the kick returner that unfortunately he outran our guy, Bryce Burton to the sideline and took one to the house. Uh, Bryce Burton had a touchdown pass today, though. Lefty. Didn't know he was a lefty. They maybe were running a fake punt. Maybe, maybe he didn't know he was a lefty. No, he knows he's a lefty. They were running a fake punt. He he rolled out on a fake punt and tossed one lefty that looked really good. Um, DJ Turner is a guy that I'm super, super intrigued by in terms of, you know, Brian Threats is is a starter at safety. Taj Ward is a starter at safety. DJ Taylor, I keep saying Turner because I'm an idiot. DJ Taylor is a guy that is going to impact games at safety. Good. Yeah. Good. Safety was a major concern. You know why safety is a major concern? Because uh, the last, like, five safeties that have played here in the NFL, except for Hicks and – he probably got a raw deal on on getting a shot, but like everybody that plays safety at Cincinnati goes to the NFL. Uh, so DJ Taylor is kind of in that in that mix of uh, he's a guy that's making plays. That's what you look for at camp. Who are the guys that keep making plays? And he's starting to really regularly put himself in that mix. So that's a guy I'm really excited to watch going forward. Anybody else on the defense, whether it be linebacker, whether it be defensive line. Gilly again, made, obviously, Tyler Gillison made a couple splash plays today. Love that kid. I know. I love Gilly. Like he doesn't have the ideal for that spot. He doesn't that, have the ideal, like long rangey body. Did I tell you the first thing he said to me when I, when I saw him at camp, no. the first practice I went to, he daps me up and he, he, he looks at me for a minute. He, he dashed me up and then looked at me confused for a minute. He's like, oh, shit. You're flow. You're <laughs> flow, bro. Just, um, he didn't recognize me with the hair. You know what also doesn't have the ideal body for that position? Dan Gresham. Like, he's not. He's Jamal small. Williams he, is long and rangy. Right. And he, like, he's small. Yeah. But, like, we're already learning with the guy in in that spot. You don't have to be well, six foot four with a seven foot wingspan. Gilly made a big stop in the scrimmage at the yeah. goal line. Um, in He's flashing. That's uh, nothing but a good thing. If, if as you're looking, and uh, obviously, I'm a little partial to this sophomore class because yeah. I covered them. Yeah. But you know, I mean. For him to be in spots already, and and him, Kalen Carroll, Oliver Bridges, um, even a little bit with uh, um, the the defensive tackle um, Shepard. Yes, thank you, um, Derek Shepard. Shep has been good, but you're not going to pass Dante. We all know that, and as long as you're good, well, you behind also him, have Dante. You have Dominique Perry. Who's not a small dude? Been in the system for like four years now. Not <laughs> a small dude. You got Jalen Hunt from Michigan State, who just came in, who who's looks been making really plays. Good. Yeah, right. Like so, Shep Shep is in a a very tight rotation for one spot, but he's been good. Right. So it, it's it's just good to see the sophomore class that's coming in. I feel like damn near all of them are making plays at this point. Yeah, they're showing out 
quite a bit of them. I mean, you talked about in the even in the BVP, you talked about Ethan Green. I've talked about Kalen Carroll. I've talked about Ken Willis. I've talked about uh, Oliver Bridges. Jonathan Harder has been a second team guy at left guard. Uh, Jonathan Thompson as well. Uh, he's been. I love. I, ooh, I love. Jonathan I Thompson. I know you. I know you love you some Jonathan Thompson. Uh, I I finally had a chance to catch up with him this past week. Um, I'm, he I makes plays, man. Look, that's that's what I'm talking about though with this sophomore class. I, I think that you're seeing a lot of progress. Yeah. With with this sophomore Agreed. class, and I, I think that you know what I love about the sophomore class is they have looked at this situation as an opportunity. They didn't you know what I, look at it as, oh no, the staff left, the people that recruited me left. I'm in a bad spot. Like I don't think these these new coaches are going to believe in me. They're going to recruit over me. You know what these guys have said? Let's go get some. I'm in. Right. Yeah, I'm in. Like we are going to be the foundation. Yeah. Of what happens going forward, I, I'm really impressed by that class. Like I, I like the the cut of their jib. Well, and I know there's a lot of people who want to hear about second team, third team, and all of that. And I think that right now, the second team and third team, I know we joke about third team because Luke's third team was a little bit different than this third team. Yeah. I think this third team is far different than a third team we've ever seen. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I'm 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 really happy to see no, the progress. No, I mean there there have been there there were times during Luke where like there were four stars well, on the third team. COVID Sammy happened. was on the and third. You, Sammy was on the third team. Jimmy you, was on you, the third team. You you had some you had some dudes who were here for a year longer than Right, of course. Would have been but sure. like but we were watching to your point though, if you're gonna say that, I've watched third teams with like four star guys. I'm, I'm talking early on Luke's who was still part of his team. I mean whatever. That's a nightcap. We'll see you tomorrow night. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken, right here on BearCatChairman.com. See ya!